Hello, witches and wizards. We have some great information about Day of the Dragons. It is September 7th, and if you need to know what three-hour window is going to be in your area, it'll be down in the description below. But I have additional information from Warner Brothers. The dragons will be available in the region as follows. In New Zealand and Australia, you're going to have the Chinese Fireball and the Antipodine Opali. In Asia and the Middle East and India, you're going to have the Antipodine Opali and the Chinese Fireball. In the Americans and Greenland, the second or the alternate dragon is going to be the Chinese Fireball. And your main regional is going to be the Peruvian Viper Tooth. And in Europe and Africa, the Chinese Fireball and the Commonwealth Green are going to be the two dragons that are spawning during this event. Additionally, there is going to be a free store bundle in Diagon Alley. The bundle is going to include 10 scrolls, five spell books, thank you very much, and 25 spell energy. Finally, 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 I was wondering how they were gonna do this, but the foundables in the moving staircases too, you know, the, the pictures of the house founders, will start to appear on the map. Now, I can't remember off the top of my head, and I'll, when I get into today's video, I'll be sure and look at that, what the middle picture is. It's, it's like a, the boar, the boar's head or something like that. That is found in Wizarding Challenges currently. You have to use a nine and three quarters runestone in order to get the potential of grabbing that. But there was no mention on if that one was going to be spawning in the wild as well or not. So there you have it. That is the most up-to-date and current information I have about Day of the Dragons. My personal thought is there's going to be some kind of a quest associated with this, but I have absolutely no information to back that up. It's pure speculation, so I could be completely wrong. And I do not know if they are going to spawn off of Dark Detectors, and I do not know if they are going to spawn in flagged areas. Just to be safe, I would stay away from those. Just, like I said, just to be safe, I, because... Flagged areas tend to act a little bit different than everything else. So if you want to get the most out of your Day of the Dragons, that is what I would do. By the time Day of the Dragons actually hits the U.S., we will already know exactly what's going to happen because there will be three other regions that will have Day of the Dragons before us. So we're, we're kind of lucky in that regard. Pay attention to social media. Pay attention to my social media to make sure that you have the latest information on Day of the Dragons. As far as dragon eggs go, I'm under the impression they are not going to be spawning. And for now, there is no way to receive those. So kind of for now, I think what you have is what you're going to keep. Remember, if you are in the Americas, the two dragons that you're getting are going to both be emergency threat levels, which means they're going to have higher XP, have the Barufio's brain elixirs, and make sure that you are up to date on all of the global challenge rewards with the XP, the 50% less walk distance for portmanteaus, the dark detectors lasting twice as long. In fact, during this three hour window, I would probably just avoid towers completely. All right, that's all I've got for this quick little update. Let's get into today's video. For today's video, I want to talk about some information in the official game guide. Again, I'm giving out a copy of this. I will give out two copies. I just don't know how I'm gonna do the other one, but a link will be in the description below if you would like to enter to win. Now, there's not a ton of new information in here, but there's some good information to actually look at and see firsthand. I know there are a lot of things that I just kind of know and take for granted, but I have never really thought about, and this book kind of helps decipher some of that and, and bring it down into layman's terms. And since I am a professor and I get a lot of questions about skill trees, a lot of people have started racking up a lot of green books, a lot of red books, a lot of scrolls. Let's kind of talk about the professor as far as a chosen profession. Professors are highly adept spellcasters who use their deep magical knowledge to debilitate enemies while also supporting their teammates. Professors are most effective when faced with foes that fall into curiosities category as professors deal extra damage to curiosities based on their expertise in proficiency power. Like magizoologists, professors often do their best work from the sideline during wizarding challenges, which is interesting. I've never actually thought about that. I thought professors were better being in the mix, fighting and battling, but this says they do their best work from the sideline. And it really makes sense because devoting their pool of focus points to unleashing their mining strategic spells. The Professor Toolkit primarily includes charms meant to impair foes and enhance allies, including one that generously buffs the whole team's proficiency power. Professors can also unleash a devastating hex that withers away at the stamina of foes, 
locked in combat with the professor's allies. Of course, professors also have a weakness against a specific breed of foe. Those that fall under the Dark Forces banner give professors trouble. Entering into direct combat against Dark Forces is rarely wise, Professor, but should the need arise, they'll find great value in boosting their deficiency defense beforehand. Now, professors have four strategic spells, Deterioration Hex, that I'm sure all of you know. The Deterioration Hex places an impairment on a foe that lowers a foe's stamina whenever they attack or defend in combat. So if you are battling against an Urkling or a Pixie and they dodge, they're still going to lose 80 HP per encounter. Additionally, the 40 damage, if it's fully maxed, obviously, is going to count in addition to your attack. So say your attack is 70, and then you're going to add the 40 on top of that. So you're actually going to do, what is that, 110? <laughs> 110 damage instead of just the 70. And then you're gonna add 40 onto that whenever you use Protego and defend against their attacks. Another strategic spell is the Mending Charm. It's going to restore an ally's stamina by a small amount. I believe when this is maxed out, it is only four HP. There is the Protection Charm, which places an enhancement on a teammate that increases that teammate's defense. This is going to come in very handy whenever you are doing team battles. And then there's Proficiency Power Charm, which places an enhancement on yourself and each teammate that increases their proficiency power. Now, if you don't know what proficiency power is, proficiency power increases the bonus damage that will be against specific types of foes that are vulnerable to your profession. And in update 2.2, this is what got corrected off of Deterioration Hex. Previously, if you were a professor and you were battling a pixie, I'm getting attacked by a goose here. I'm about to get attacked by a lot of geese. I don't want to show you this. I'm getting swarmed here. Look at this guy. <laughs> like he's right there. <laughs> and then there's one right there. And then there's one right there. I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. But what I was saying is prior to 2.2, if you were a professor and you were battling a pixie that had the hex on them, not only would you get the hex, but then you would get proficiency against that as well. Well, they've taken off that proficiency buff, which I think is the way it was supposed to be in the first place. So if we are to dig in a little bit deeper, you will see the professor's skill tree. It is called the Principles of Professorship. There are more skill trees coming soon. We don't know when that is, but if you've looked at the notes at the current rate that we're getting resources, this is gonna be plenty to last you for a year. The Principles of Professorship provide an excellent lesson plan that all aspiring professors would do well to study. Indeed, its very first strategic spell lesson teaches students the devastating deterioration hex, which reduces the afflicted foe's stamina each time they attack or defend themselves in combat. Hexing enemies has its benefits since many of the profession benefit lessons found within the professor's lessons plan teach them to become more effective in combat against hexed foes. These lessons are all found along the plan's left side and they pair wonderfully with the mini hexes that allied ores might imply. So since you go first with hex, if you do a lot of solo battles, it may be best for you to focus on this left-hand side of the skill tree, or if you do battles with ores primarily, again, since they can put like confusion or I think dancing with dummies on opponents, this left-hand side here is going to be your best benefit to start leveling up first. It's not all hexes for the professor. This lesson plan primarily teaches charms, supportive strategic spells that let the professor heal and enhance their frontline allies. Remember before, they said that professors are best off to the sideline, which I found kind of interesting. The Magizoologist holds the top prize as a team healer and reviver, yet the professor has an important role to play as well enhancing all their allies' defenses to keep them from needing much healing. Remember, that is going to be the protection charm. Speaking of enhancing allies, the profession benefit lesson found on the right side of the professor's plan 
grant extra benefits to the professor whenever they're buffed. This makes professors especially dangerous, especially when combined in the challenge arena with other professors and magizoologists. So if you are battling primarily with other professors or other magizoologists, this right hand side is going to have the charms and spells and enhancements that are going to benefit you the most. If we are to look at my specific professor lesson plan here you will see that I am at level 12 I have hundred and ten out of hundred and thirty four lessons learned and just scrolling through this I'm I've kind of done the top-down theory now the first one that I can do that I haven't messed with so far is this mining charm maxima and I don't know that it's really worth it it's only seven scrolls and only four green books but restoring stamina from two to four seems meh to me I, I I don't see a whole lot of value in that now if I look over at these others that I'm that I'm roadblocked at 15 green books I don't have this one over here on this side the sparring specifics six scrolls and 15 green books but defense versus foes with two or greater impairments goes from 0% to 9% so that might actually be worth it but as you can see I kind of just blew straight down my red my skill tree here but I have since kind of gone back with a lot of the books that I've got at FanFest because remember I got 30 additional I went ahead and did this restricted section which is gonna give me plus six percent defense versus foes with one or greater impairment if we are to look at my expertise section you will see for power versus foes with one or greater impairment I get plus five for defense versus foes with one or greater impairment I get plus six percent and for defense when you have one or greater enhancements that's plus six percent my deterioration hex is at eight of eight my mending charm is one out of two my protection charm is eight out of eight and my proficiency power charm is at four out of eight my initial focus starts at four and it's maxed out at 15 total and my player stats for stamina i have 23 out of 25 giving me a total of 359 hp my power 19 out of 20 which gives me 75 attack my protego power which is 4 out of 5 for 23 percent critical power 6 out of 8 lessons for 91 percent my proficiency power 6 out of 8 lessons for 104 percent deficiency defense is maxed 5 out of 5 for 50 percent my defense is maxed 4 out of 4 for 44 percent my defense breach is 2 out of 3 for 8 percent and my accuracy is only 2 out of 5 for seven percent I hope that this sheds some light on the profession of the professor I hope it kind of helps you decide am I gonna go down the left hand side am I gonna go down the right hand side or am I gonna go top down when filling out my skill tree one final thing that I want to touch on before I wrap up today's video is adventure sync a lot of people have asked me well what is adventure sync basically adventure sync is what is going to allow you to accumulate distance on your port keys without the game being open that's all i've got for this one i hope it helps you guys out when deciding what to do with your skill trees let me know in the comments below anything that i missed remember you can enter to win the free guidebook that i will be giving away this weekend so day of the dragon september 7th if you are in north america you will have pretty much all the information you need as long as you pay attention to social media leading up to the event which starts at 11 a.m pacific time that's all i've got for this one so until next time